we're looking at the life of Joseph, who goes essentially from a little boy and his family to prison pits, to uh, accused of crimes he didn't do, to becoming prime minister in the greatest nation of the world at that time, straight out of prison. I'm super excited this morning. We're jumping back into our series, The Promotable Life. And we said we wanted to do six weeks, and we seated up, and we got all the way to Exodus chapter 40, and then we want to jump in for a number of weeks and finish off this amazing series. But I want to mention this. We're doing a series called The Promotable Life, not called The Promoted Life, because there is a difference. And the difference is this, is that the grace of God encounters a life, and we receive all spiritual blessing, receive salvation. It's all in Christ. It's done. But is every person that encounters Jesus, does every one of them walk into everything that God has for him? No. What about the nine, the ten lepers? Nine walk away, only one comes back, and the Bible says actually only one receives in the fullness. What about those who came? What about the rich young ruler? Jesus said, go and give it all away. And he says, ah, I can't do that. Did he walk into everything? No. So we come to this guy, Joseph, who seems to, no matter what challenge or trial he encounters, he seems to keep rising up and being promoted. He, he, he's the favored son with his dad, and yet his brothers despise him because he comes to them and immaturely at 17 says, you're all going to bow down to me. You even you, daddy. You're going to bow down to me. And they want to kill him. But the compromises, they sell him into slavery, and he's on the back of a, a camel going through the desert going, what did I do wrong now? And then he gets resold because obviously they made a bit of a buck on him, and he gets resold into a guy named Potiphar who translates as the fat bull. He gets resold into the fat bull's house as a slave. And, but he works hard there. He gets recognized. He gets promoted in Potiphar's house. How? He's a slave. No, he gets promotion because he's still God's son. He's still anointed. He's still the guy with the promises on his life. And yet the problem is he also got noticed by saucy Susan, Potiphar's wife. No, the Bible doesn't know Susan. If your name's Susan, I apologize for choosing your name this morning radically. It's not in my notes. But, but she notices him and, and also gives him a little bit of a promotion like he'll be at the top of my pile and he's forced to run. He has to run away from temptation. He does the right thing, but the right thing ends him up in jail with a name rapist on his back under false accusation with a wrong sentence, he ends up spending 10 years in jail. 10 years where he gets promoted again. How does it happen? What's with this guy? He just keeps getting promoted. Why? Because he's still a son of God even though he's in jail. And the message is this. Maybe you're in jail right now. Maybe financial challenges, whatever it is. You're still a son or daughter of the living God. It doesn't limit because of your circumstances. The limits are His, and there's no limits on Him. And we're reminded of this when we come to the Word of God to be reminded of this. But then He encounters these two guys in Genesis 40, just to make sure we're all up to speed. One of them is the chief wine taster, and he comes and he says, I had a dream, and the baker goes, I also had a dream. No one can interpret them. But Joseph was a guy with a gift of dream interpretation and dreams in his life. So he says, well, he's a little bit more humble now. He says, well, God can interpret your dreams. Why don't you tell me? Still tell me. So he interprets their dreams. The result, the chief winemaker gets restored to his position. The baker, your head's going to be chopped off in three days. Whoop, head off, gone. And the winemaker comes and says, Joseph, I'll never forget you. I'll never forget you. I promise you, when I get to Pharaoh's presence, I'll make sure he knows about you. I'll get out of this place because I know you shouldn't even be here. And as he navigates that reality, we encounter the reality of life in this time. He spends another two years in prison because what does that guy do? He forgets him. It says this at the end of chapter 40, verse 23. The chief cupbearer, however, did not remember Joseph. He forgot him. He just, it doesn't mean... The chief cupbearer had become evil. He was intentionally forgetting. It just says he forgot him. Maybe you're here today and you've been forgotten. Maybe promises have been forgotten. Maybe there was a boss who promised a bonus at the end of a tough 2022 and he just, well, he forgot. Maybe someone promised love and, and they forgot. We're going to come to Joseph and I want to give you the model answer for 2023. I know you've got questions about 2023. You're like, how are we going to navigate load shedding? What are we going to do? Cryptos are up. Currencies are down. Who knows what's right or wrong? I need the model answer for my marriage. 
I need the model answer for life. I need the model answer for the story. Help me. Who thought matric would have been much easier if you'd been given the model answer, but it was legal? Legal. You couldn't get in trouble. Who thought that might have helped? So you're like, not sure. Can I answer? No, I think it would have helped. I want to give you the model answer. And here's the thing. You're not going to get in trouble because it's the Bible. And the Bible gives us a very simple model answer. But I also know it's been holiday, so some of you are a little bit ahead, ahead in your Netflix TV watching and a little bit behind in your Bible reading. So we're going to read a chunky section of Scripture today together just to help you catch up. Is that good? Cool. Wonderful. Read with me Genesis chapter 41, Pharaoh's dreams. When two full years had passed, Pharaoh had a dream. Just take those first couple of words. When two full years had passed. He was standing by the Nile when out of the river there came up seven cows, sleek and fat, and they grazed among the reeds. After them, seven other cows, ugly and gaunt, came out of the Nile and stood beside those on the riverbank. And the cows that were ugly and gaunt ate up the seven sleek, fat cows. Then Pharaoh woke up. That is a scary dream. Number one, cows shouldn't eat cows. I mean, I'm not even that clever, and I know that much. And, and then, but he finds the ability to go back to sleep. It says, he fell asleep again and had a second dream. Seven heads of grain, healthy and good, were growing on a single stalk. After them, seven other heads of grain sprouted, thin and scorched by the east wind. The thin heads of grain swallowed up the seven healthy full heads. Then Pharaoh woke up. It had been a dream. In the morning, his mind was troubled, so he sent for all the magicians and wise men of Egypt. Pharaoh told them his dreams, but no one could interpret them for him. Then the chief cupbearer said to him, Today I am reminded of my shortcomings. Pharaoh was once angry with the servants, and he imprisoned me and the chief cupbaker, chief baker in the house of the captain of the guard. Each of us had a dream that same night, and each dream had a meaning of its own. Now a young Hebrew was there with us, a servant of the captain of the guard. We told him our dreams, and he interpreted them for us, giving each man the interpretation of his dream. And things turned out exactly as he interpreted them to us. I was restored to my position, and the other was impaled. So Pharaoh sent for Joseph. And he was quickly brought from the dungeon. When he had shaved and changed his clothes, he came before Pharaoh. Pharaoh said to him, I had a dream, and no one could interpret it. But I've heard it said of you that when you hear a dream, you can interpret. I cannot do it, Joseph replied to Pharaoh. But God will give Pharaoh the answer he desires. Then Pharaoh tells him, tells him the same dreams. Catch up in verse 25. Then Joseph said to Pharaoh, the dreams of Pharaoh are one and the same. God has revealed to Pharaoh what he's about to do. The seven good cows are seven years, and the seven good heads of grain are seven years. It is one and the same dream. The seven lean, ugly cows that came up afterwards are seven years, and so are the seven worthless heads of grain scorched by the east wind. They are seven years of famine. It is just as I said to Pharaoh, God has shown Pharaoh what he's about to do. Seven years of great abundance are coming throughout the land of Egypt, but seven years of famine will follow them. Then all the abundance of Egypt will be forgotten, and the famine will ravage the land. The abundance in the land will not be remembered, because the famine that follows, it will be so severe. The reason the dream was given to Pharaoh in two forms is that the matter has been firmly decided by God, and God will do it soon. And now let Pharaoh look for a discerning and wise, young, wise man, and put him in charge of the land of Egypt. Let Pharaoh appoint commissioners over the land to take a fifth of the harvest of Egypt, during the seven years of abundance, they should collect all the food of these good years that are coming up and store up the grain under the authority of Pharaoh to be kept in the cities for food. This food should be held in reserve for the country to be used during the seven years of famine that will come upon Egypt so that the country may not be ruined by the famine. The plan seemed good to Pharaoh and to his officials. So Pharaoh asked them, can we find anyone like this man, one of whom is, in the, sp is the Spirit of God? Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, since God has made all this known to you, there is no one so discerning and wise as you. You shall be in charge of my palace, and all my people are to submit to your orders. Only with respect to the throne will I be greater than you. Jesus, Father, Spirit of God, thank you for your word. Thank you for this history story of what you did in a man's life and how you saved a nation through a prisoner. We worship you, God, and give you praise. Amen. First of all, falsely accused. Second of all, forgotten. Ten years in prison and another two years just forgotten. That's the guy we meet. His name's Joseph. 
maybe, again, you've been forgotten. Like Prince Harry. <laughs> Sorry, I've got to mention Prince Harry. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't even know how he relates to the story, but it, it's been a big week for Harry. I mean, he's got daddy issues. My kid's got daddy issues too. I once forgot Judah after an evening service. He was about four years old. His mom messaged me and said, he's sleeping in the breastfeeding room. We finished the church service. I went home, watched a movie, and about 11 o'clock on a Sunday night, I went to bed, and Ken says, did you tuck Judah in? Of which I remembered I never even brought him home. I had left him in the breastfeeding room <laughs> under the guard of star alarms. But he was fine, and I'm hoping he won't have issues from that moment. <laughs> but two years, Joseph just gets forgotten in prison. And all of that time, you can imagine, I don't know about you, but maybe there are moments you were going, God, what's going on here? I, I ran from Potiphar's saucy wife. I, I did the right thing. I have trusted you. I have honored. I have served my masters. I've even served in prison. And here I still sit forgotten. You know, the challenge is his response wasn't that. His response was patience and trusting God. Why? Because his great granddaddy was Abraham. His great dad Grandfather was Isaac. His father was Jacob. He worshipped the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He was the inheritance of a inheritor of a promise. We even see as we navigate that Christianity is not about answered answers, answered questions. Who ever told you that Christianity is about you getting all your questions answered? Not the Bible. No, the Bible said we challenge, and our faith is challenged by a lack of understanding. Even as Dave preached last week, he mentioned that they didn't understand the bread and the loaves, so because they didn't understand, their hearts became hard. And when our hearts become hard, we lose faith. But my heart's meant to have faith. And so we're reminded as we pulled the story of Hebrews 11, all these great heroes of the faith that says of them, all these people were still living by faith when they died. What a great testimony. At their death, still lots of faith. They did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance. That's the testimony of the heroes of the faith. Don't worry, it gets better. But God was preparing a man with an answer for a king in a prison. Maybe you're saying, I don't know why my job feels like a prison. I don't know why my life's feeling like a prison. Maybe God's preparing the answer for kings of this world to encounter the king of heaven. Because a day comes and it just goes like this. In the morning, his mind was troubled. He has these crazy, crazy dreams. And we'll speak about the dreams a little bit later. But cows eating cows and heads of grain eating heads of grain and, and famine and all these changing. You've got to understand when a king hears about cows and grain, he goes, the prosperity and health of my kingdom is at risk. His very identity as king is being challenged. The strength of his kingdom that, result, that rests on the wealth of his kingdom is being shaken, and he wakes up troubled, and he goes looking for answers. Google, no one. Diviners of the land, no one. Magicians, no one. Who can help me? And God chooses that day. Why that day? I don't know. Why two years delay? I don't know. Let's cut out a meeting that we might have one day where you say, I need a meeting with Mark because I need him to answer the question of the delays in my life. I can't. So now we don't have to have that meeting. I don't have that answer. I just know there's a God who's sovereign who says he'll work all things for the good of those who love and trust him. That's what I know. And because I know that, I can stand on that. And a king wakes up one morning troubled, and he's not going, I need a prisoner. He's going, I need a God. You've got to understand, this is a man, self-declared God, going, I'm troubled. And they'll always get there. And it says this, Then the chief cupbearer said to Pharaoh, Oh, today I'm reminded of my shortcomings. They're like, why today? Joseph's going, what happened the other 700 days? Why today? I don't know, but God was on the move. And God is looking to save a nation. God is looking to promote a son so that God gets the glory. Because Pharaoh would always understand that his nation will be saved by the plans and purposes of a living God. Because God raised up a man from a prison. Why not two years before? I don't know. But I love that we encounter Joseph and he's ready for his moment. I don't know about you, but I would have been tempted to spend those extra two years going, I was faithful for 10 years. I'm going to use these two years to get really grumpy. And when I get out of here, I'm going to look for that chief wine taster guy. And I'm not going to clean myself. I'm just going to, I'm going to go after him. And I'm going to tell Pharaoh about how bad that guy is. 
See, the Bible just says this. So Pharaoh sent for Joseph, and he was quickly brought from the dungeon. He didn't have time to get over stuff. He didn't go, oh, Pharaoh's calling. I've got to forgive him. Let me find, I've got to tell him I forgive him. Church, stop telling people you forgive them and just forgive them. Just do it. Not because they need it, because you need it. Because I'm telling you, most people, that, that incredible stone, most people die chasing the snake after it's bitten you because they run the poison to their heart. If you stop chasing, your body starts pumping and their blood doesn't get to your heart. Stop telling people you forgive them and just forgive them. And it says this, so Pharaoh sent for Joseph and he says, when he had shaved and clothed, changed his clothes, was it the fact that he had shaved and changed his clothes that moves Pharaoh's heart? No. Or was it the gift inside of him? Yes. But if he hadn't shaved and changed his clothes, do you think he would have got into the presence of Pharaoh? Probably not. This is Pharaoh. Bit of a cleanliness freak. Bit of a, you come to me, you clean up. Maybe, just maybe, some of the reason we're not walking into the promise we have is we don't clean ourselves up a little bit. I'm being serious. Like, you want to get a job? Don't walk in like you deserve it. Prepare like you're the guy you should want them to have you. And then walk in with the gifting and the grace in your story. I just love it. Joseph gets on with the story. says, actually, he just cleans himself up. He shaves, puts on good clothes. And he walks in. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, I had a dream and no one can interpret it. But I've heard it said that when you hear a dream, you can interpret it. What an incredible statement. He's come from a prison. The highest guy in the land says, I think you've got my answer. In the background, the chief wine taster going, please, Joseph, don't mess this up. I really don't want to be impaled. I saw what happened to the baker guy. I didn't like it. Please don't mess this up. On the other side, the magicians and the guys who had no answers are going, please mess it up, Joseph. Please, we are all dead. If you get this right, we are finished. And, and, and Pharaoh's already asked some question, but in the background, he's going, how many, times, how many different ways could I kill this guy? He's probably not going to get it right. Probably de be dehead him, have him pulled apart with horses. I don't know. He's, they all there. Joseph's going, he knows all of that. And, and he has one opportunity. And in this one moment of opportunity, he gives us the model answer for 2023. Are you ready? So, so if you need an answer for how to answer this year, are you ready? I don't feel like you think this, I'm, I'm like telling you, I'm telling you this is the model answer. Joseph replies, I cannot do it. <laughs> Wrong answer, Joseph. <laughs> Wrong answer, dude. You've been in prison for 13 years. How can you say to the guy who can get you out, I cannot do it. Wrong answer. See, I don't know about you, but since I was this big, I was told, just say, you can do it. <laughs> just, just say that. I was always one of the smallest in my grade. Back yourself is what I was taught. And so I learned to back myself. It nearly killed me a few times. Especially the one time when my mate dared me to jump off a two-story building and said, back yourself. And I did, but I headbutted my own knees and I was concussed badly. I backed myself, but it didn't go well. See, we told to back yourself. We've got some images. This is what we get shouted at. And just, it helps us understand. That little girl was told to back herself. The next guy. Come on, people, you can do this. This is the message of the world. You can do it. <laughs> see, see, that lady, you've got to back yourself and your strength. And this is what the world shouts at us. And if you can dream it, you can do it. Surely. Why not? And then our last and favorite guy <laughs> says, come on. We are taught to back ourselves. And Joseph gets one opportunity to get out of prison and get his life back on track. He's lost from 18 to his 20s are gone given to prison and false accusation with rapists across his back. And he has one opportunity, and I'm giving you the model answer. The answer starts like this. I cannot do it. See, the 17-year-old Moses, um, uh, Joseph, I'm getting all my Bible characters mixed up. The 17-year-old Joseph, he was like, hey guys, look at me. You're going to bow down to me because I had a dream and I got all the gifting. The, 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 the slightly older Joseph, 28, stands before the bank says, well, God interprets dream, but why don't you tell me? The 30-year-old Joseph, ready for promotion to become the prime minister of a nation and wear the robes of prime minister of a nation, goes, I can't do it. The very first part of the model answer is a startling challenge to you can do it, to 
back yourself, to have self-confidence. I was 21 years old and I applied for a job at a multinational and in the application I wrote, they said, what do you want to be remembered when you leave one? I said, I want to be indispensable. I'm writing to a multinational company. I resigned one day. You know what happened? They carried on. <laughs> they, they were like, we'd like to keep you, but we'll be okay. I was mortified. <laughs> and yet Joseph has learned something in his years is primed for the ultimate promotion, a supernatural God promotion. And he says, can you do it? And he says, I can't do it. But carries on, I cannot do it, Joseph replied to Pharaoh, but God. I love the but gods in the Bible. And if you read the Bible, you'll find it all over the place. Um, from Genesis 8, but God remembered Noah. God was going to wipe out all humanity, but God remembered Noah. Genesis 50, you intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done. Psalm 73, my, fault, my flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart. Psalm 86, but you, Lord, are a compassionate and gracious God. Acts 7, and the patriarchs, jealous of Joseph, sold him into Egypt, but God was with them. Joseph had a but God. Do you have a but God in your model answer for 2023? Because if you don't and your answer is, I got this, I'm telling you, you don't got this. And Elon Musk can't control the economies of the world. He can give it a go and he can tweak and influence, but ultimately he'll be forgotten. And rulers will rise up and cities will rise and cities will fall and economies will come and economies will go. And if we allow our hearts to come and go with all these things without a but God, I'm telling you, we are just those who know of God and have an understanding of His potential, but we aren't believers. Believers rest on these words, but God. Believers are the ones who face trial and challenge and go, I see it, I see you as a giant, I know you're big, but God. A model answer for 2023. Is it working for you? I cannot do it, but God. See, if there's no but God, then, then there better be an increase in our ability to do it, which I think we have limitations and we get there. And life has a way of getting us there. And sometimes it's the health of your children and you go, but God. And sometimes it's economies and businesses that you poured your life into and they get liquidated and you go, but God. I watched my parents lose their life savings at 62 years old, but, but I've also watched them go, but God. And I've watched God provide. And I've watched people with hopes and dreams that they haven't walked into yet still go, I cannot do it, but God. But it doesn't end there, the model answer. Are you ready? That was a terrible answer. <laughs> no one said yes. You're like, Carries on, I cannot do it, Joseph replied to Pharaoh, but God will give Pharaoh the answer he desires. But God will, not but God can. There's a difference between believing God can and believing God will. It's called believing. I'm a believer and so are you. I'm not a religious individual who knows God can. That's not enough. I am one who goes, I cannot, but God will. And I'm standing in front of Pharaoh who can literally chop my head off in 37 different ways with the wink of an eye. And Joseph has the confidence of a son of God to say, I cannot. Even though there's gifting and even though there's grace, I cannot. And although you call yourself a God, Pharaoh, but God will. Joseph, no, no doubt daunted by the king in front of him, no doubt challenged by his 30 years that have been challenging. He, he, he falls, he stumbles into a model answer that he gives to us today, 2,023 years later and some more. My maths isn't good. He didn't live with Jesus. <laughs> he just says, church, our strongest place is when we get to a place of saying, I cannot. I can't. I can't. I can't. I don't have a model answer for my marriage, my kids, my life, this health. 
this mental health battle that I don't know how to explain. I can't. And we sit down and we start to do what we're designed to do. Rest. In the sufficiency, the perfection, the ability, the power, and the love of the Almighty God. And all of a sudden, as quick as Joseph's promotion from prisoner to prime minister, we go from broken, beaten, and chained to sons and daughters of the living God. And what's changed? Maybe absolutely nothing, but everything at the same time. I cannot do it. But God will. With confidence, knowledge, assurance, and strength, I cannot, but God will. I was going to ask you to stand, but won't you just sit? Just close your eyes just for a second. Maybe today is the first day of surrender as a believer. Oh, surrender is important. Maybe you've been taught a gospel that... Tell the world you're the top of the mountain, not the tail. You're the head. You, 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 you're chosen by God and shout it to the world. And the more you shout it, and yet if I look at Joseph's life, he didn't live any of that. And yet he still trusted. But he knew who God was. And he gave us a model answer that still stands. I cannot do it. I cannot deliver myself from these afflictions. I cannot pay my way into eternity. I cannot face the giants that are coming, and they are coming. And we sit in surrender. But that's not the end. But God. Let's just remember who God is. He spoke and it was. And he'll speak again. He spoke two words to a stormy sea, be still. And the waves died down and the sea stops raging. And maybe you just need those same two words right now. Be still. Be still. Mental health in this room, be still. Physical disorders, disease, be still. Broken relationships, be still. Because God will. We are believers in the living God. We aren't practitioners of a faith. We aren't marked on a merit or demerit system about how we get it right or how we get it wrong. We are believers who follow a glorious king. Pulled into faith. But God. Can you stand with me this morning? As we close, we've already had communion, so we've already made the statement of faith about his perfection in this room, his blood, his ability. Can we just say that together? Is that all right? The model answer going to work? I dare you to give it a try. It's not mine. It's a guy named Joseph, who in a five-minute period went from being a prisoner to a prime minister. You're saying, I would just take like one little promotion. No. Don't settle for what the world says is good. Ask God. Will you say it with me? I cannot do it. But come on, church. It's 2023. Let's shout it at 2023. I cannot do it. But God will. I cannot do it. But God will. And we worship you, God. Can we just praise Him just for a second? If you're fighting battles, you feel like you're in prison, praise Him. Trust Him now. Tell Him you trust Him. Tell Him you trust Him. Tell Him that He is able. Tell Him and declare your inability. And yet, place your trust in Him. He's glorious and He's faithful. And He loves you and He's kind. 
and although the winds are swirling and we are tempted to get insecure in our position, don't become insecure. Find courage in His goodness. Find peace in His love. Know that He is with you. He loves 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 you. And men will forget. And women will forget. And cities will rise and fall. But the God of heaven never forgets His promises. He is the glorious Father seated on His throne. Above it all, beyond it all. Place your trust in Him. At the start of this year. At the start of all that He has for you. Thank you so much for joining us. If you'd like to take your next step or find out what is happening in the life of the church, head over to our website or follow us on social media. Cheers.